<laughs> Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you, Elon. It's been uh, almost six years where we, I sat with you here in this platform with a great audience. Uh, it was your uh, first trip to Dubai with your family. I hope you yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, it was wonderful. Uh, uh, very much enjoyed. Um, I, and I, I, I see my, my head is gigantic on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I do, <laughs> my head has grown larger uh, since we last met. Is it, is, it, is it because of Twitter? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, perhaps. <laughs> uh, it, um, it, Twitter is it's, it's certainly um, you know, quite the roller coaster. Uh, Elon, just, you know, it's been, it's been six years. Uh, within six years, we've seen a tremendous thing since our, our last conversation. We've seen the pandemic. Uh, Russia and Ukraine war, uh, development of uh, chat, GPT, uh, you launched uh, Starship, uh, you recently also acquired uh, Twitter. Can I ask you this question? What is what? <laughs> why, why, why you bought Twitter? Why didn't you create your own platform? Maybe it was cheaper for you? I mean, I thought about creating something from scratch. Um, but uh, I, I, th I thought it would, it would, Twitter would perhaps accelerate progress versus creating something from scratch by three to five years. Um, and um, I think we are seeing just a tremendous technology acceleration uh, that you know, th three to five years is actually worth a lot. Uh, so, I mean, to be frank, I was a little worried about the direction that, and the, and the effect uh, of social media on the world, and especially Twitter. And um, I, I thought it was very important for there to be a maximally trusted sort of digital public square um, where people you know, within countries and internationally could communicate uh, with um, you know, uh, the, the least amount of censorship uh, allowed by law. Uh, obviously that varies a lot by jurisdiction, but I think in general, um, you know, social media companies should adhere to the laws of, of countries and not try to put a thumb on the scale beyond the laws of countries. Um, so, and I, and I think this is something that is probably agreeable to um, the, uh, you know, the, le the legislators and, and the people of most countries. So, so I, th I think it's, that's the general idea is just um, to, reflect the values of, of the people um, as opposed to imposing the values um, of essentially San Francisco and Berkeley, um, which are so somewhat of a niche ideology um, as compared to the rest of the world. And, but, but, you know, Twitter was, I think, doing a little too much to impose um, a niche, as, uh, you know, San Francisco, Berkeley ideology on the world. Um, so, you know, I, I thought the, it was important kind of for the future of civilization to try to correct that uh, thumb on the scale, if you will, um, and and, uh, and and just more, have Twitter more accurately reflect, uh, like I said, the the values of the the, the people of Earth. Um, that's the that's the that's the intention, um, and uh, hopefully we succeed in, in, in doing that. Um, yeah. uh, but how do you see Twitter? If we, we say it five years down the road, what's your vision for for this platform? What sh what should it do? Well, I, I think it would be. I'd like to you know have this sort of long term vision for something called uh, X dot com from back at, way back in the day, uh, which is kind of like a, a um, sort of like an everything app. Um, where it's just maximally useful. It does, you know, payments. Uh, it does um, uh, so it provides financial services, provides information flow, um, really anything digital, um, and um, you know, also provides secure communications. Um, so, it, it really, to, to, to you know, I think yeah, you know, be, be as useful as possible, as entertaining as possible. Um, and also to be like a, a source of, of truth. Like if you want to 
uh, find out what's going on and what's really going on, um, then you could should be able to go on 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 you know X, the X app, and uh, and and find out. So it's a sort of source, a sort of a, a source of truth, and a maximally useful. I guess app is about the wrong word, but system, um, and and twi Twitter is essentially an accelerant to that sort of maximally useful everything app. Um, yeah. How how you are gonna? I mean, if you look at Twitter today, I mean, it's it's a platform. Sometimes there is a lot of misinformation in Twitter. Sometimes I don't feel comfortable even because there is some way there is this negative between nation, between people, between a different uh, ethnic uh, group. There is this hate thing. How you are, how you are going to fix this issue where you are, you are on a mission with, for humanity to get them together? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think there's, um, there's something that we're, that we're putting a lot of effort into called community notes. Um, it's currently just in English, but we will be expanding it to uh, all languages. Um, that is, I think, quite a, a good way to um, assess the, the, the truth of things, where it's the community itself, basically the, you know, the, the people of Earth who are basically, you know, um, not exactly voting, but, but competing to provide the most accurate information. So it's sort of a, a competition for truth. Um, and I think it's a very powerful concept to have a competition for truth. Um, and because well, you can also say, like, what, what is true? It's because what may be true to some may not be viewed as true to others, but you want to have the closest approximation of that. So I think the, the community notes thing is very powerful. Um, I think the uh, trying to have as many organizations uh, and people and institutions uh, verified um, as being legitimately those people and organizations is, is important. Um, and to have the organizational affiliation clearly identified um, so that if you want to find out if somebody is actually, if, if an account is actually, say, from a member of parliament or a journalist or uh, if, if a, let's say, if, if a Twitter handle is uh, actually belongs to, say, Disney Corporation or something like that, you, you, can, you can go on Twitter and it's, it's sort of an identity layer uh, of the internet and you, you can confirm that that is, in fact, the, the case. And, and I think once you've got these sort of interlocking um, sort of identities, uh, it's, it's actually very hard to be deceptive in that case. Uh, because, and, and, and it's also you have a reputation to protect at, at that point. So I think then people are far more likely to be measured in their response um, and um, be, more, be more reasonable since they have reputational value at that point. Um, so these are some of the ideas that I have, um, and you know I'm not saying that for sure it will succeed or that you know, it's going to be perfect, but I I, I, I I am confident that we'll over time you know, head into a, in a good direction, um, and and um, and, we'll, and and I think that the, the evidence for that will be do people find it useful, um, you know as, as we're measuring sort of the you know t total user minutes, but not just user minutes. Um, Unregretted user minutes is, I think, the the, the key figure of merit. Um, you know, because um, while, well, for example, TikTok has a, lot, a very high usage, I often hear people say, "Well, I spent two hours on TikTok, but I regret those two hours." Um, no, I'm not trying to try to knock TikTok, but it's just we don't want that to be the case with Twitter. We want to say, like, okay, you spent half an hour on Twitter, but you found it to be useful and entertaining, and um, a good thing in your life. Um, and ultimately be a force for good for civilization. That, that's the aspiration. Thank you. Uh, Elon, we have over 150 government within the World Government Summit, uh, global leaders. They have 8 billion customers, their citizen. How government can use Twitter better to serve its citizens? Yeah, um, well, I, I think generally um, I would recommend, um, you know, really communicating a lot uh, on Twitter. Um, and uh, I, I think it's good for people to speak in, in their voice as opposed to how they think 
they should speak, you know, like, um, you, you know, sometimes like people think, well, I, I, I should speak in this like way that is expected of me, but, but it, it ends up sounding, I think somewhat at times somewhat stiff but, and, and, and not, not real. Um, you know, like if you read a press release from a corporation, it just sounds like propaganda. So I would like encourage uh, CEOs and um, of companies and, uh, you know, legislators and, um, you know, ministers and so forth to, to speak authentically uh, uh, and to, you know, if there's a, say, a particular policy to explain it. Um, and um, and I, I think there's, you know, sometimes a concern about criticism, but I, I think at the end of the day, you know, having some some criticism is, is fine. You know, it's not that, it's really not that bad. Um, um, I mean, I, I, I'm constantly attacked on, on Twitter, frankly, um, and I, I don't mind. Uh, it's, it's um, you know, you have to be somewhat thick-skinned, I suppose, at times, you know, just because you're going to, they really will try to twist the knife. Um, but but I, but I think, I think just like I said, just uh, as, a, as a forum for communication, um, it, it's great. And, um, and I would just encourage more communication um, and, and like I said, to, to, to sort of speak in an authentic voice, like, like sometimes people will have someone else be their sort of Twitter manager or something like that. And I think, uh, you just, people should just do their own tweets, you know, <laughs> it sounds, uh, it, it, and, and like sometimes you, you make a mistake or something, it's fine. Um, but I think just doing your own tweets, just like you would do your own, you know, you give a talk here or you would you know, have a meeting at a summit or some. Uh, I think that that's that's the way to do it. Is is to actually do do the tweets yourself, um, and um, and convey the message that you want directly. Um, yeah. So, it, but and, uh, I mean, one thing I should say on. And I know this is called the World Government Summit, um, but um, I think we should be maybe a little bit concerned about. Uh, actually becoming too much of a single world government. Um, if, if I may say that we want to avoid creating a civilizational risk by having, um, frankly, this may sound a little odd, too much cooperation between governments. Um, you know, if you know, if you look at, say, the, at history and the rise and fall of civilizations, um, that the really all throughout history, civilizations have risen and fallen, but it hasn't meant the doom of humanity as a whole, because there've been there've been all these separate civilizations that were separated by great distances, and so um, you know, say like while Rome was falling, it, uh, it you know uh, Islam was rising, and uh, so you had like a uh, you know the the sort of caliphate do, doing incredibly well while Rome was doing terribly, um, and that actually ended up being a source of preservation of knowledge. Uh, and and, uh, and many uh, scientific advancements, and so, um, so I think we want to be a little bit cautious about uh, being too much of a world, of a single uh, civilization. Because if we are too much of a single civilization, then if, if we, if the whole the whole thing may collapse. Um, now I'm not, obviously not suggesting war or anything like that, but I think we want to be a little bit wary of actually cooperating too much. It sounds a little odd, but. Um, but we, we just we, we want to have some amount of civilizational diversity such that if uh, if something does go wrong with some part of civilization that the whole thing doesn't uh, collapse uh, and, and, and you know humanity keeps moving forward thank you uh, uh, I you see I, I hear you I agree and disagree with you at a certain point and I think uh, you know it's today people they don't fight with sword anymore I mean they have nuclear well, weapons so if there is there is this <laughs> conflict the whole civilization will be gone the whole human civilization will be gone and what we are trying to do here at the emirates actually is to do exactly what you are saying we have 180 nationality you have every single race every single religion and we are trying to create a model that show the world that it doesn't matter who you are what your color what's your religion where you're from you Humanity can live in peace and harmony. Uh, yeah, I mean, that would be great. Yeah. 
my, my, my last question, I'll go to Twitter uh, again, then we'll move out of Twitter, if you allow us. Uh, I mean, you've been running Twitter as, as the chairman, as the owner, as the CEO, and that's take a lot of time. Did you identify a CEO and when you are going to hire him? Well, um, I, I think I need to um, stabilize the organization um, and just make sure it's in a uh, financially healthy place um, and that the, the, the product roadmap is clearly laid out. Um, so I don't know, I, I'm guessing probably towards the end of this year um, which would be good timing to um, find uh, someone else to run the company because uh, I think it should be in a stable position around uh, you know, at the end of this year. Uh, Elon, uh, if we move to another subject, I mean, uh, at the summit here, we have speakers who speak about state of the world, a state of geopolitical of the world for the next 10, 10 decade, a state of the economy of the world, you know, now and uh, in the next uh, 10 years. If I ask you about the state of technology, if you can elaborate a bit and brief us, how do you see technology in the next 10 years from now? Let's see, 10 years, it's always difficult to predict technology with precision, um, especially over a 10-year time frame when it is changing so much. Um, I mean, there's, there's, there's obviously the transition to sustainable energy uh, with uh, solar, wind, batteries, and electric vehicles. Um, and and that, that is, if you look at the percentage growth of that, that is a very high percentage growth. Um, although because of the massive industrial base of, um, of the current sort of um, fossil fuel economy, it, it, even, like, even if all, for example, if electric cars were 100% of production immediately, it would take 20 years to replace the fleet. So this is still something that is quite gradual. You know, it's, it's measured in at least a few, you know, 30, 30 40 years type, type of time frame. Um, on, on a more a sort of near-term time frame, I think artificial intelligence is something we need to be um, quite concerned about and really be uh, attentive to the safety of, of AI. Um, you mentioned uh, ChatGPT earlier. Um, you know, I, I played a significant role in the creation of uh, OpenAI. Um, essentially, at the time, I was concerned that Google uh, was not uh, paying enough attention to AI safety, and, um, and so, and so I, 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 with a number of other people, um, created OpenAI. And although initially it was created as an open source nonprofit, and now it is closed source and for profit, I, I don't have any stake in OpenAI anymore. Nor, nor am I on the board. Nor do I control it in any way. Um, but the, the chat GPT, I think, has illustrated to uh, people just how advanced AI has become. Um, the, the, because the AI has been advanced for a while, it just didn't have a user interface that was um, accessible to most people. Um, so what really chat GPT has done is just put an, an accessible user interface on AI technology that is, um, that has been present for a few years. Um, and there are much more advanced versions of that that are coming out. Um, so I think we, you know, I think we, we need to really be, I think we need to regulate AI safety, frank, frankly. Um, because if you think of any um, technology which is potentially a risk to, uh, to, to people, like if it's aircraft or, uh, you know, cars or, uh, medicine, we have regulatory bodies that um, oversee the public safety of, of cars and planes and medicine. And um, I think we, we should probably, we should have a, a similar sort of regulatory oversight for artificial intelligence because um, it is, I think, actually a bigger risk to society than uh, cars or planes or, or uh, medicine. Um, so, um, and this may slow, slow down AI a little bit, but I think that that might also be a good thing. Um, the, the, the challenge here is that 
uh, government regulatory uh, authorities tend to be set up in reaction to something bad that happened. So if you look at, say, aircraft or, or cars, um, you know, the cars were unregulated at the beginning, aircraft were unregulated, uh, but they had lots of, um, you know, airplane crashes, and in some cases, manufacturers that were cutting corners, um, and and a lot of people were dying. So they, the public was not happy about that, and so they established a regulatory authority to improve safety. And now commercial airliners are um, extremely safe. Um, in fact, they're safer than than if, if you were to drive somewhere. Uh, it's the, the safety per mile of a commercial airliner is better than a car. And, and cars are also extremely safe compared to where they used to be. Um, so, um, but if you say, if you look at, say, the introduction of seat belts, uh, the, the auto industry fought the introduction of seat belts um, as a safety measure for, I think, 10 or 15 years um, before finally the regulators made them put seat belts in cars. And that greatly improved the safety of cars. Um, and that airbags were another big improvement in safety. So um, my concern is that with AI, if, if there's something bad, that, if something goes wrong, um, the reaction might be too slow from a regulatory standpoint. Um, so I, I, I'd say like, it, 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 you know, if I'd say like, what, what are the biggest risks to the future of civilization? Um, it's AI, but AI is a double, you know, it's, it's, it's both positive and negative. It has great, great promise, great capability, but it also with that comes great danger. I mean, you look at, say, nuclear, it, it, you know, just discovery of sort of nuclear physics, uh, you had nuclear power generation, but also nuclear bombs. Um, so anyway, I think we should be quite concerned about it, and we should uh, have some regulation of what is it, if, if uh, fundamentally, um, a risk to the public. Uh, yeah. Very great. Uh, let me move to another subject, uh, Elon. Education. I mean, you have your own philosophy about education. With AI, education might change dramatically. Can you tell us briefly about your philosophy of education? And number two, do we need 12 years of schooling and four years of university? Well, um, with respect to education, I think, in, in general, uh, some, some things that we could do to make it more compelling would be to explain to children why we are teaching a particular subject. Um, so uh, the human mind has evolved to really forget anything that it deems um, un unimportant. So. Um, in fact, human memory is really quite quite bad um, relative to say, the memory of your phone. Your phone is can remember the entire contents of an encyclopedia down to the last uh, letter and pixel, um, but human memory is, is terrible by comparison. So the mind is constantly trying to forget things. Actually, um, so if you but if you explain the the why why a subject is being taught, um, that will then establish relevance. And it's much more likely to result in motivation for kids. Um, and, and then also, if you if you teach uh, knowledge, especially in the sciences, as solutions to a problem, um, it's much more effective. So, uh, like, let's say you're trying to un understand an internal combustion engine. Well, it's actually better to, to sort of take that apart and and then say, okay, well, what tools do we need to, take, to use to take it apart? We need a wrench and screwdriver and various other things uh, to take it apart. Well, then, then, then you understand that the reason for the, the tools. And so, like for, for mathematics and, and uh, it's are like tools in, in, in physics and engineering. Um, but if you if you but if you, if you teach to the problem and, and say and then you understand, then you establish the relevance of the tools. Then you it's actually much easier to remember um, mathematics and physics. Uh, because they help explain how the world works, um, as opposed to teaching them without explaining why, um, and simply teaching them. It's like instead of having teaching to the problem, teaching currently people teach the tool. It would be like having a course on on screwdrivers or a course on wrenches, um, 
it, but not understanding why you have a course you're learning about screwdrivers and wrenches. Um, I think this is really quite a fundamental principle that should be applied in education. Um, and, and I think sometimes we do, we do teach classes that, are, that children do not find useful and, and where the answer to the why is actually not going to be a very good answer. Um, you know, like, like, um, most people, I think, will, do not find advanced mathematics useful and are unlikely to find it useful in their life. Um, or the elements that they do find useful could be taught very quickly as general principles. Um, I also think that uh, critical thinking is something that should be taught to children at a, at a relatively young age, um, as, as effectively like a mental firewall, um, to really think about um, when somebody tells you something, um, is it cogent, is it true, or what is the probability that it is true? Um, and so that you can be taught to reject things that are untrue or more likely to be untrue um, and favor things that are more likely to be true. Um, critical thinking, I think, is very helpful for, for, for people to learn. So is it 12 years of schooling you are with or without 12 years? Um, 12 years is a long time, I suppose. Um, but I, I mean, humans just do take a long time to mature. So there's emotional maturity, physical maturity, and mental maturity that is happening simultaneously with the education. Um, I, mean, I suppose it could be done in 10 years. Perhaps it does not need 12. Um, but, but, but then is someone mature at age 16? They're more likely to be mature at age 18. So I guess 12 years is probably not bad. Um, we probably don't need an additional four or five or six years in, in um, college or university. That seems probably excessive. Um, yeah, I think we will probably shave a few years off and be fine. Right. OK. <laughs> Kids will love it, by the way. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, social media. But you know, we spend so many hours on social media. I mean, the average sometime in certain countries, three, four hours on social media. And sometimes when we go to our kids, we, we see them spending also long hours, part of this knowledge. Do you have any rule for your kids? I mean, how much they can spend on social media? I, you know, I've, I've generally not uh, tried to restrict social media for my kids, although that might have been a mistake. Um, depending on which kid it is, that I mean, they've really been programmed by Reddit and YouTube, I'd say, um, more than anything else, Reddit and YouTube. Um, I think probably I would limit social media a bit more than I have in the past. Uh, and just, you know, let's take note of what they're watching, because I think, you know, at this point, they're, they're being like programmed by some social media algorithm, which you may or may not agree with. Um, so I, I think uh, probably one needs to supervise uh, children's use of social media. Um, and. and be wary of them getting programmed by some algorithm written in the Silicon Valley, you know, which you know, may or may not be what you want. Uh, uh, Elon, you've been working very hard. I mean, since six years ago we met, you look, you look much younger, by the way, than six years ago. Uh, thanks. <laughs> you look great, too. <laughs> but I, I know that you've been working for almost 20 hours a day. You sleep. And the sofa in the office, maybe Twitter office, uh, Tesla office, you told me once we, I, I was with you at Tesla's office. How do you balance your life? Yeah. I mean, with this stress, with so many different, you know, you're in so many different company parallel, how do you balance it? Well, I, I mean, I, I should point out that I, a 20 hour workday is uh, relatively unusual and, and rather painful. Uh, but but I, I, I do sleep six hours a night, so. Um, and if I sleep less than six hours a night, I find that I am, I might be awake longer, but I get less done. 
So, um, but I, I, I do have a work a ridiculous amount, I think, relative to uh, most people, and in, in that it's pretty much seven days a week, and mostly from when I wake up to when I go to sleep. Um, I'm not suggesting this is good for everyone, and I think, frankly, I would like to work a bit less than that. So, um, I think you know, if I look at say te Tesla, Tesla went through some very difficult times where it was on the ragged edge of survival, and and uh, really, if I if I didn't give it everything I got, I think the company could have easily gone bankrupt. It was really on the verge of bankruptcy for quite a while. Um, I, I don't mean to suggest complacency at this point, but uh, you know, it, it does require much less work um, to operate Tesla now versus, say, in the 2017 to 2019 time frame. Um, and and it's, it's not at mortal risk of, of survival. It's, it's, it's achieved economies of scale that make it, you know, not uh, on the ragged edge of survival. Um, and then, and then SpaceX also has a strong team and is able to make a lot of progress, um, even if I spend less time there. Um, it, it does help if I spend time there, but uh, you know, it, it keeps making progress even if I don't. Um, Twitter is, is still somewhat of a startup in reverse, and so there's a lot of work required here to get Twitter to a sort of a stable position, um, and uh, like I said, to really uh, build the engine of engineering, of software engineering at, at Twitter and have it, um, you know, really have a, a, like sort of a, a great product roadmap and and the, the people in place to implement that product ro roadmap. And so it, it is not my intention to work um, like crazy, you know, I mean, I think I still, I, I, I got comfortable with a mere 80 hour work week <laughs> would be fine. All right. Uh, uh, and as per, that, that is what I would aspire to. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are running out of time. I have one last question I have to ask you. Sure. Three UFO been shot, one over Alaska, Lake Huron, and Canada. Alien, no alien. <laughs> I, I don't think it's aliens, no. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I do find the, the whole question of, of aliens um, a very interesting one, uh, you know, what is typically called the Fermi paradox, which is that if the universe is really as old as, it, as science seems to think, think it is, and as and, and the, the, where are the aliens? Um, if, or have we really been around for 13.8 billion years? If so, where sh shouldn't there be aliens all over the place? Um, why do we, the crazy thing is I've seen no evidence of of alien technology or any alien life whatsoever. Um, and I think, I, I think I'd know, um, you know, SpaceX, we, we do a lot. I mean, I think I know, I don't think anyone knows more about space, you know, than, than me, or at least the space technology. Um, so, but I think it's actually a troubling thing if there are no aliens as well, which is that, <laughs> uh, that, that what, what that actually could mean then is that uh, so, sort of civilization and consciousness is like a tiny candle in a vast darkness and, and, and a very vulnerable tiny candle that could easily get blown out. Um, and I think we should therefore take great care with what may very well be this tiny candle in a vast darkness and make sure that it does not go out and that we extend the light of consciousness beyond Earth um, and do everything we can to ensure that uh, the light of consciousness does not go out. Elon, we've run out of time. Thank you very much.